So what makes a good user in Madden? Well, let's start with the obvious. Height is always important. You talk about players that are out of position, linebackers in Ultimate Team, the Rob Gronkowskis, the Harold Carmichael safety items, or you talk about just generic linebackers like Ray Nitschke, who's six foot three. But the most important part about setting up your user is what abilities do I choose to make him better? Now, there's definitely abilities that are very meta out there in the community, starting off with the Lurk Artist. The Lurk Artist is an ability that gives you not only pick artist, but also lurker stacked on. This is something specific to linebackers that EA did this year. They invented this ability. I mean, they already existed. It's just two abilities combined, but it turned these linebackers into really, really effective items on the field because not only could you jump higher, but once you intercept the ball, you now have unlimited stamina until you're contacted. So better chances for interceptions and returns. So your user item needs to have the lurk artist ability. I've seen a lot of players out there in the community say, well, I just put a safety at linebacker and they can animate on their own with or without pick artist. That's fine, but I would argue for free on most linebackers that you should be using a linebacker lurk artist. It's better than a safety with just pick artist or nothing at all. And then of course, from there, we have to talk about tackling abilities. There's countless glowing running backs in this game that have auto broken tackle abilities. The Eric Dickerson's of the world, a new Walter Payton sweetness item just came out this past weekend that has built in angry runs that doesn't even count as an X factor. So having this type of tackling ability on your user is paramount because you're not only going to not get broken tackles when you make these conservative tackles, but it also decreases significantly the fake out chance that occurs when somebody tries to juke you in the open field. Sub linebacker items that are a little bit cheaper and older will get a different tackling ability known as secure tackler. That's absolutely fine as well because I think the most important part is not getting broken tackles from Angry Runs running backs. So the thing that's going to improve your user big time is going to be one of three pre-lit X factors, or if it gets it as a passive ability that you can select from a bucket, you guys can use any of these three as well. And those X factors are charge up reinforcement, charge up dual threat, and charge up universal coverage. Now, if you're going to be using a charge up universal coverage, you're most likely going to be looking at a safety item that you are then going to be placing at linebacker. So from there, just understand you're probably not getting the lurk artist that I just talked about. Now, what these three abilities all have in common is that they have a disrupt of catch animations built into those abilities. And those particular X factors do not care what assignment your user is in. So this means that when you are playing this game and you decide to blitz your user for the purpose of rushing four, but really rushing three, you're gonna be able to get sheds with your front three and your user can stay in that blitz assignment. And if you make contact with the receiver, they're gonna drop the ball either way. Now, the downside to charge up style reinforcements is that these things are on for six plays and then off for three. It's still free from an AP standpoint, so it doesn't cost anything against your budget. But if you guys wanted to increase that, you guys could also use the ability known as persistent, which is going to add two plays to the light up phase. So instead of six out of nine plays, you will then get eight out of 11. So if you have an extra AP point floating around, throw it on your user with one of those charge up X factors. Now, the other option is to use a built-in X Factor. You're going to find these on a lot of the ultimate legend type items in this game. And the new one that just came out is the Larry Wilson. This one has the universal coverage as well. Now, the interesting thing about this is much like reinforcement, universal coverage also includes knockouts regardless of what assignment you're in. It does say man and zone, but this also works in a blitz assignment as well. And I'll show this to you once we take the field. And then, of course, just mentioning dual threat, the ability to run Rush the passer it's basically unstoppable force kind of coupled in with the reinforcement knockout so it also does not care whether you're in a man zone or blitzed assignment and while i'm loading into practice mode if you could do me a solid make sure you guys are subscribed right here to the zan madden youtube channel not only are we going to be doing a lot of madden content but we are going to be breaking into the college football 25 game before you know it we're about a month and a half away i cannot wait for that game to drop so if you guys are interested in that game as well make sure you guys are subscribed hit that notification bell take advantage of our college football 25 pre-sale over on gridirongameplans.gg the best place to get better at madden now your one-stop shop for all competitive football gaming go check it out 9.95 a month for the madden side and our pre-sale offer ends for the college football game on July 19th. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a test case. I'm gonna put in an item that is a very, very good linebacker item. In fact, I think you guys could 
go buy this right now and he would be a great user for you. There is one downside and we're about to kind of show that to you, but that item is Derek Brooks. And with this Derek Brooks item, I actually have the three abilities that I think are very, very good to start with, which are going to be a tackling ability, a mid zone knockout and the lurk artist. So this Derek Brooks is fine. And if we were to kind of just play with this item, throw Texas routes, whatever, as long as I am in a zone assignment with Derek Brooks, you will notice that we can get knockout type throws. So you'll see here, as long as I make contact, as soon as that guy is kind of catching the ball, you're gonna be able to force that knockout. Again, mid zone KO requires that you are in a zone assignment. Now, we also know in this game that in order to get pass rush, you have to rush a minimum of four rushers. So you see here in this example with Dime, if I rush four, these guys are capable of getting off blocks. I threw the ball a little early here on this because it was a quick pass, but these guys could shed all the same. In fact, I'll go ahead and just snap the ball and hold on to it here, and you will see that the pass rush is going to basically work off the blocks they can shed now here's the thing madden has a built-in three rusher minimum so let's say for whatever reason i'm worried about a mobile quarterback and i decide you know what let's put calvin johnson in a spy i'm now rushing three i want you to watch the difference we snap this ball and you're going to see that all these guys are basically blocked and they don't shed at all i mean you take a look here look at this pocket it held up for a very very long time now with this particular setup in order to unlock your pass rush again, so let's go back to that same defense. I need to trick the game into thinking that I'm rushing four. So in order to do this, you have to blitz your user. So now our count is four, but this actually isn't enough. The real secret to rushing four is that you have to move down until the green bars appear over your rusher's head. These are your pass rush bars. This is what tells the game that he is one, blitzing, and two, in pass rush mode, so he can play off those pass rushing animations. If you're back here, the game will not count this as four rushers. If you're up here, the game will. So now when the ball is snapped, I can just peel back in coverage and you're gonna see sheds much sooner and we have our three man rush. Now here is the downside to this. Let's go back to that original setup. Maybe I've got my user blitzed here. I'll put Calvin Johnson in something out of the way here. And I'm gonna go to throw that Texas route again. So we're dropping back in coverage. They throw this, I make contact. Did you see here how I did not get my mid zone knockout? In fact, what you saw light up was just the tackling ability on my player. So you see right here, they threw this underneath. I make contact and he held on to it. A big time difference in what occurred when we threw the Texas route against the mid zone knockout and made that same hit over the middle. Now here's where the reinforcement or the dual threat or the universal coverage comes into play. Let's go ahead and put in Harold Carmichael. My Harold Carmichael has a charge up reinforcement, so I can move him around my defense however I see fit. So now let's go ahead and put Johnson back into that purple zone. I'm going to blitz Carmichael, so I have a rush of four. Now, so this doesn't shed, I'm not gonna step up. Um, I just wanna show you the knockout can occur with a blitz assignment. I'm gonna put that Texas route on the field. So now what we're going to see is so long as I make contact, you're gonna see the guy drop the ball because the reinforcement does not care what assignment you're in. You can see the little airplane logo below Carmichael's feet. And that occurs for pre-lit reinforcements. This also includes the passive reinforcement. So another item in the game that gets reinforcement, but it's built in as a passive ability is Ronnie Lott. Now Ronnie Lott doesn't get KOs for very cheap. So we're in a spot right here where the only way I can really turn him into a user monster is by having him with reinforcement. So if I go to throw that same route that we've been throwing here, you're gonna see that his reinforcement also causes knockouts. So this allows me now to rush three, which our pass rush with three will be similar in time to the quarterback as a four man rush, which allows you to play technically eight people in coverage with your user blitzed and still get knockouts with the reinforcement. Now I did mention also that dual threat plays into this as well. Basically dual threat is unstoppable force plus the knockout components of reinforcement. It doesn't get the impact block wins from reinforcement against vanguards, but it does work the same way. The other ability that I did talk about is the universal coverage. So what I'm gonna do right here is I am going to use the Larry Wilson item that I showed you guys at the start of the video. 
I'm gonna put him back in with universal coverage. Now you would think that you would have to be in a man or a zone coverage assignment for universal coverage to light up and cause knockouts. But what we're gonna see here is that it much like reinforcement and dual threat does not care. So we go to throw this Texas route over the middle of the field and you see that the knockout from the universal coverage will occur even from a blitzed assignment. So those three abilities essentially allow you to rush three, which is going to act like it's four, allowing you to drop more in coverage to better cover the metas that you face in the game, whether it's bunch, trips tight end, tight, but also your blitz user can now knock out. Unlike in other defenses where maybe you're running just a stack of a mid zone KO, a tackle supreme and alert artist, your blitz user can't force knockouts. So what you should be targeting now is essentially a pre-lit reinforcement on your user or a passive reinforcement that works all game or some sort of charged up reinforcement that once it's up, you're going to end up not having to worry too much about it being off the majority of the game. The combine items are a really good example of an item that you guys could use. I believe the Simmons safety gets a reinforcement that after nine plays, it's on for the rest of the game. That's a pretty darn good deal to make your user able to knock out in any assignment. And as EA continues to release some of these X factors as passive buckets or charge ups, these are things you should absolutely consider to improve any defense in the game. So this wasn't a video that was going to make it so your lurk was better. You're literally just gonna be able to cover more field by dropping more players, get the same pass rush while rushing less players, and your user becomes a more impactful KO player regardless of what assignment you're in. So that is how you improve your user in Madden 24. Very, very important stuff. Make sure you guys are adding this into your defense. If you're a dollar player, uh, big nickel over G, 6-1, it does not matter. Super, super important stuff. If you guys enjoyed today's video, if you did, make sure you guys give it a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys this afternoon with another short or tomorrow with another long form upload. Until then, this is Zan. Get the lab in. Good luck.